What's up, everybody? How you doing? How you doing? I hope everybody's doing well. I am doing great. So, yeah. Today, we'll be talking about the 2012 Stop Motion 3D Anime Remake of Frankenweenie. And before we begin, did you subscribe? Did it hit bell? If so, let's begin, shall we? So, yeah. Frankenweenie. Here we go again. This time in Stop Motion. It was also like usual, like usual thing. It's directed by Tim Byrne, of course. The great mind story himself. Was screenplay by John August, based on the original live action short film by Lay Reeves, who did the screenplay, and Tim Byrne did the story. Which you have a cast of characters. You have Charlie Tehan, Catherine O'Hara, Martin Short, Martin Landau, Atticus Schaffer, and Weona Reitner. And this is actually the first black and white feature length film and set in the first stop motion film to release an IMAX 3D. Which is pretty cool, actually. How I don't recall a stop motion film going black and white. Do you? Well, uh, well there is one, but not like IMAX. I forgot the name of this short film, but this stop motion film. Mm. But anyway, let's continue. It's actually quite longer, remember, because the original is like 29 minutes. This is 87 minutes with a budget of $39 million. Well, the original was only a million dollars. I don't know, but remember, it was not released on theatrical, but home media. Well, it's been shut for a long time until it has own. It was before it has own home media market. Of course, this film made a budget, a box office, but of $81.5 million, which, damn, that's a lot of moolah, I'll tell you what. As for the cast of characters, we, well, most, well, there's some people who do, like, like extra work, like, way more. Example, you got, Vic, you got Charlie Dunham voicing Victor Frankenstein, you know, the young boy who brings his dog back from the dead. Also, we have Catherine Harrow, who's doing not just... She's voicing Suzanne Frankenstein, a.k.a. Victor's mother, originally played by Shelley Duvall in the live-action version. We also have the Weird Girl, which is one of the newer characters, Victor's unnamed eccentric classmate who's obsessed with a psychic prediction of her cat, Mr. Whisker. The gym teacher who replaces Mr. Rukowski as a science teacher when he gets fired and has no knowledge of science, which... Good grief. Are you sure she was a gym teacher or a stripper? Because the way, okay. If you're going to see why she's being chased by a rat. Like a Frank, like a monster rat. And she just climbed the pole like she, it, was like, it wasn't her first time doing it. <laughs> and you can see she's well built. Like, what the hell? Is this height? What's her name? Gym, she, she's only known as gym teacher. And are you sure her, her name's Heidi? I hope not. <laughs> of course, we have Martin Short, who's voicing Edward Frankenstein, Victor's dad, Mr. Burgermeister, the grumpy mayor, the mayor of New Holland, which that's now the name of the town, New Holland, because we already know the name of the town from the live action. Plus, he, this is the mayor. His is also Victor's next door neighbor, and uh, of course. Which, he's a funny fact, which I never knew. Burgermeister is actually a homage to the villain Burgermeister Meisterburger from the 1970 Rankin Bass television special, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Are you kidding me? And I didn't know until I looked two two together, the, 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 the look of them. They look exactly, except one difference, the nose. Like, yeah, Burgermeister, Meister Burger has this big nose, while Mayor Burgermeister has, like, a regular nose, but a round body, but way more rounder than Meister Burger. Jesus Christ, I didn't put that together. That's actually pretty cool, that they actually pay a homage to a villain from a Rankin Bass special in a Tim Burton film. <laughs> Ain't that pretty cool? But continuing, we also have, let's see, Nassor, Victor's classmate, 
who was the owner of Colossus the Hamster. Nasser has a flat head inspired by Frankenst the Frankenstein monster and his voice and face resembles of the late great horror actor Boris Karloff who played the monster in the 1931 film. We have Martin Landu who is, who is voicing Mr. Rukrowski, the eccentric but wise science teacher in Victor School, who has a thick Eastern European accent. Which, of course, Rukrowski is the inspiration to Burns childhood icon Vincent Price, which he looks just like, he looks just like him. We also have Atticus Schaffer as Igor, Igor Victor's hunchback classmate, which I expect he's the inspiration to the Igor Stock character. We own a writer as Elsa von Helsing, which is Victor's kind classmate and next door neighbor, also the Burgermeister's niece, and the owner of a poodle named Persephone. Okay, Burgermeister. I would wonder if if her, her of the character's last name is related to what Dracula's mortal enemy von Helsing because Mr. Burgermeister we never hear his other last name just Burgermeister so I believe he has another family named von Helsing which could be a, a, like a tidbit to the to the mortal enemy of monsters as Abraham von Helsing so yeah we also have other characters that make them a lot actually Let's see, who else? We also have Robert Capron as Bob, who is Victor's old white classmate, and of course, Takashi's science fair partner, which, you know who Bob? He's the son of the fat woman, you know her? From the live action? Yeah, this is her son. We also have James Hiroiku Hiroki, or Kai Hirokai Leao as Takashi. Tushaki, Tushaki, Victor's competitive classmate, and also a former owner of Shelly the Turtle. This version of Godzilla or Ogam Gamera. <laughs> we have Concha Farrell, Bob's mom, which is an overweight, stereotypical suburban housewife who dotes upon her son. She believes in the status quo and that her misguided actions are Bob's best interests. No shit. And of course, we have the le one and only Tom Kenny. Which, uh, we, all who know, we all know who Tom Kenny is. He's Spongebob. He's many... You see the face, you see that ear, know that's that voice. You know it's going to be him. As New Holland's town folk. The one who speaks at are, are the fire chief, a soldier, a man in the crowd during Mayor Burgermeister's town meeting revolving Mr. Rakowski's teachings. Okay, and also, the actor, Chris Relieve, who had worked with Tim Burton on five early films, makes an appearance via the inclusion of a live-action clip from his 1958 film Dracula, which they... It's a scene you miss it because, I very recall, Chris Lee was alive during his time. He passed away in 2015, so... I think his last Tim Burton film was Dark Shadows, which came out around 2013. Or 2014, around there. That was his last film with Christopher, with Tim Burton. Rest in peace, Dracula. Which I did not knew. It's like a scene you miss it when Victor tries to sneak out when he's sneaking out of the house, his parents watching the film. He's right you can see his the film they're watching is Dracula as well. But everything was the stop motion is actually quite cool, plus you have a lot more expanding in the town because in the compared to the live action, it's only like twenty nine minutes, you always go back and forth, mostly around Sparky, wander around. And also, Persephone, the poodle, which Sparky has a crush on, it does appear in the live action. And also sports the famed Bride of Frankenstein beehive hairdo. 
when she gains contact with his bolts in the fence, which it does it again in here in the stop motion, and she gets the hairdo, and and Elsa doesn't even know, or doesn't take no didn't take notice of it. <laughs> But still, there's a lot of things like, okay, you got the opening. One thing I like was the opening credit for the, of the film, like the Walt Disney logo. <clears throat> it goes from the regular till it switch, it goes to black and white organ music, like a horror film. That was pretty cool. And a lot of people parody it. I think in YouTube, a lot of people parody this logo intro, which in this would be the logo intro to the Haunted Mansion, which I wish... They did that for the 2023 version of it, but they put the 100th anniversary one, which, damn. At least the one we have, at least the the one we have that was pretty iconic was the intro to Hocus Pocus 2, which, you know which one. When you see the castle, it switched, go to, all the way to, the castle turns to this, <laughs> there, you know what I mean. Damn. As you know, we open up to the, you know, the family watching one of Victor Tom films, which is uh, it's direct right to the original as well. And also we get a lot more, like, with all the characters on the sides, mostly except in the in the original, they never mention the science fair because Victor only want, who learned about this because he wants to bring his dog back to life. Here, it was, he's trying to figure out what to go do with the science fair, of course. Their classmates are competitive, including some side plots and its other antagonists, which is going to be around shortly. Like, we have the weird girl with the cat, which the cat does predictions by crapping out letters. Like, I think one of them got a perfect game, another one got knocked out by a, a stray ball, the fat kid gets stuck in a manhole. I don't know who else, but just those three, of course. She has a, a letter for Victor, which I don't know what it's going to be, which you don't know, of course. This one, he plays baseball, which I don't know if he does play baseball in the original live action. I don't know, which, of course, he does, which he has a home run, which, of course, Sparky chases the ball. He might as well grab it until we all know what happens. Beep, beep. <laughs> ah! Yeah, which leads to the famous graveyard scene, which... I like the this this graveyard here. It's like a like a direct like a perfect replica of the original set from the 1984 version of the graveyard. But I remember, in this one, I think because the original it opened up the title to the graveyard with the you know next to the I think it was a fire hydrant before it released the title name Frankenweenie. Well, this one just released the title like during the beginning before ever reaching the part of the pet cemetery. Of course, we get some flashback. Like we have Mr. Krusky explaining about electricity and everything. That's what we didn't know about the live action version. We remember it's more shorter before we get, they had to get more explore, more complex, more open in the world building here of New Holland, Clint's people, town. It's like a parody of Holland, which is a Dutch te Dutch country in Europe, and also. Victor does bring Sparky to life, and of course, Mr. Burgermeister sees this. Uh, he doesn't have no idea, but he's, he's, you know, Burgermeister's like the mayor, remember, he's curious about this. Of course, Victor's successful of bringing Sparky to life. Of course, there was a problem. Keep it quiet, which, of course, he's gonna see exploring everywhere. Which, yeah, we see some gags like him. See, like, see Persephone's, you know, Elsa's poodle, giving the poodle the the Bride of Frankenstein hairdo. Of course, we see him scaring the hell out of Bob's mom, like in the original as well. <laughs> and also some other shenanigans, like... Walking around the park, and he finds a pacifier, and the baby looks down and says, Huh? <laughs> yeah. Until it scares Sparky, and puts the path The mother just puts the pacifier back in the baby's mouth. Without knowing Sparky had his mouth. Congratulations, baby. You, you toddler. You tasting dead dog. Wolf. <laughs> of course, he goes back home. With a, and Victor doesn't even know it. He doesn't even know it until, unfortunately, uh, Edgar sees Sparky, which, of course, he uses his blackmail to get Victor to teach him how he does it. Of course, 
he gets a dead goldfish, and it's the same thing. But of a different result. Which, of course, turns out, the goldfish becomes invisible and also a bit bitey. But, of course, he tries to show it to the others, like Takashi and Bob, when they, when he, they see the invisible goldfish. By using a flashlight to see his shadow, of course, they don't know how until they... Guess what it, Guess what this happens? He looks at a, a poster of the Saturn V rocket. It's like, okay, we're building a jetpack. And guess what happens? They try to do this on the roof, and Bob falls to the ground. Which, of course, he just like... Moment of is like... Ah! And the ambulance shows up saying, what were you boys thinking? Sight. Which, of course, the town meeting over. And of course, we have one guy said, Hey, they say that Pluto is no, go no good to be a planet anymore. When I was a kid, Pluto was a great planet. Damn. And of course, they summon Mr. Krotowski. And you see him walking like. He does the Vincent Price wall. Like, of course, the Burger was called Mr. Menace, which, really? Which, of course, Krotowski calls out the people for being unintelligent primates because he tried to teach his students real education, but of course, unfortunately, this gets him fired. And the gym teacher takes over, and still the science fiction still goes on. Of course, Victor sees Krotowski packing his things and explains that him that. Where he's from, many people earn Nobel Peace Prizes, even his own plumber. But of course, he asks Victor about his experiment, which one he loved, and which one that actually scared him. Which was, which one he loved was bringing back Sparky alive, and the other was the, the goldfish. Which of course he pats Victor on the back for good luck, and he leaves. Of course, we see the other kids talking. Of course, we see Nastor talking about that there was no goldfish. It was actually a parlor trick, but it was impossible until Edgar just spilled the beans that he learned it from Victor because he brought Sparky to life, which, of course, he takes him to their house, to Victor's house, while he's not home, and shows him his laboratory, which even they try to figure out the li until they figure out the lightning, the ones who show up were Nasor, Takashi, Bob, and the creepy girl. And so they realize, hey, how about we bring our own pets back from the dead? Soon, one by one, let's just say there was a sidebar until Mrs. Frankenstein walks up the attic and finds Sparky scared half to death, seeing that Sparky's alive. Which, of course, let's just say Victor explained that, of course, they, they know how Victor felt, so... They help, they're going to help him find Sparky. Meanwhile, the other kids are looking for dead bodies to bring back the dead. Like, we got Takashi and... Sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name, but hey, don't blame me. And Nasor, about to bring, both giving them the, I'm going to win the science fair. Which is, okay, I like how... Ugh, screw it, Takashi... Digging up his pet's body, Shelly, while Nasor goes to Colossus' tomb, which is like a giant like a mausoleum for a tiny hamster. Meanwhile, Edgar goes finds a dead rat, while Creepy Girl got herself a dead bat. <sighs> Soon, they managed to conduct like get enough antennas to, to bring all the lightning because if you recall Mr. Lacrosse. Krotowski says it's the windmill no, Dr. Nassar explains it's the windmill that attracts the lightning in the town every night. Which of course it confers true because they each lightning bolt strikes everywhere like it strokes one at Takashi and another one Nassar. Well he uses balloons as his conductor while well the creepy girl uses with clothes hangers and and, oh yeah, I forgot Bob uses sea monkeys. And dumps it in the pool, putting out a giant metal pole in the pool to generate electricity in the water. Soon, let's just say their experiments, it didn't come out like Sparky, like, you got 
Bob's with sea monkeys are more menacing like creature from the Black Lagoon, like an army of them. You as for Takashi, look at his shell he became Gamora. Unfortunately, Crippin Girl, let's just say, went from hybrid, like the cat was holding the dead bat while the electricity struck Zap mixing both the DNAs of the bat and the cat and turned into a monster cat bat cat bat monster. Literally. And this is where he just went full evil. As for Colossus, the hamster, let's just say it was pretty funny, like you see his loud thump, 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 like a big beast is about to appear. And it turns out, it's a tiny hamster that looks like the mummy. <laughs> of course, Victor finds Sparky on his, right at his grave, laying there. That's when he knows something strange, like, two graves have been opened until he realized... Let's just say Bob and Takashi run towards Victor for help. Of course, Bob said, I got a problem. And Takashi, mine is bigger. Yeah, Shelly became Gamora, like literally. And Takashi, okay, he doesn't give a shit. He's holding his film camera, movie camera. He's about to, <laughs> movie magic. While Edgar's being chased, well, technically, he runs out. And the coach is still there until she sees the rat, the giant monster rat. Oh boy, what, where's everybody? In the fair, in the, whole, in the town fair, which of course we have Elsa being the candle girl, which of course she has a bunch of candles on her little Dutch hat, which the uncle says, don't be stupid. We have the fire marshal, which is the old geezer, Jesus Christ. Sooner or later, everybody fears the rumble, which is Shelly, aka Gamora, pop showing up. Jesus, and this is something I love because this is like a homage to every single monster from every horror film, from kaiju to Clark from the Mummy, Creature from the Black Lagoon, everything. Damn. Of course, one by one, they find a way to defeat each one. Like, let's see, like Gimbal, the sea monkeys. They were not born in sea. Salt water and fresh water because they can't stand salt water because they saw one of them eat pop salted popcorn and it blow up. The other was the rat who accidentally bit Sparky's sp sp bolts, which of course re reverted him back to a dead rat. Jesus. Who else? We also see a short lived battle between Colossus and Shelly, which of course. Col D now, Sora wants to be tell Colossus to kill, kill, which we see like, like, <laughs> if you know what that means, Chou just stumped on him like literally like, splat, <laughs> and his roar sent Nasora in wrapped like a mummy and stuck in a a, ki a cute little sarcophagus of a doll. <laughs> Of course, Takash could not control Shelly, and he gets grabbed. But of course, with all the spillage, they used the liquid, like I think it was root beer, that was on the ground, put wire on it, and electrocuted Shelly back to his small shell form, which of course upsets Takash, literally. The only one who's missing is Mr. Whiskers, the terror, which is... Her I think it was harassing Persephone and Elsa. Of course, the cat bat kidnaps Persephone, takes to the windmill, while the townspeople think Sparky was the cause and start an angry mob chasing Sparky the same direction, which... Really, you dumb fucks? Of course, there was a, we have a little battle between Sparky and the cat bat, which ends up, the cat bat ends up getting staked. Which is the first time we see a monster get staked and in stop motion. Wow. Of course, Persephone is saved, but before that, until Sparky is trapped and get crushed by the debris, we hear Spark. We hear Victor screaming. Of course, we all know how this ends. Everybody turns on their cars, brings Sparky back to life. And of course, he comes back to life and gets to Persephone's, like in the original. Which is pretty interesting, actually. 
But yeah, out of all of it, Frankenweed's the uh, this version of Frankenweed's pretty cool. And this came out back in October fifth. Well, in the U.S. And I was, ugh, sorry. And this was a good film, actually. To tell you the truth, I'm always a sucker for stop motion, but if either way, it would be if it would be the live action or stop motion, I'd say it'd be both. Because here in stop motion, you have a lot more world building, more characters to explore. In the live action, you have only a few people, which of course they form a small angry mob, and the wind the windmill is like a, a pup putt. Well, here is a is an actual giant windmill. But still, it's pretty cool, actually. And I don't know how much this film made. Let's see about the the marketing. I remember the marketing. There was a whole lot of it during the marketing at the time period. As for the the uh, the critical response, was pretty positive. It was pretty cool. And it won it won a few awards afterwards. Shoo! I tell you the truth. I recommend. Okay, never mind. I think we all know you have this in your bucket list for Halloween films. I'm not gonna lie. Anybody who has a bucket list that doesn't have any Tim Burton film, stop motion or live action, has in their bucket list. Period. But still, I find it's a good movie. It brings good memories. I remember after watching this when I was in high school when this came out. I feel it was my sophomore year. And to tell you the truth, it was worth it. It was good memories. But yeah, let me know what you think of Frankenweenie, the 2012 version. Did you did you watch it in theaters when it came out? Did you enjoy it? Tell me tell me on the comments down below. Uh, what was your first scene? Did you give like how much to classic horror films? But yeah. If you're new to the channel, remember to subscribe, hit the bell, like this video, and remember to subscribe. Our goal is to hit 1 million subscribers or at least 500k. But until then, have a great day, everybody. Stay safe, peace out, stay cool.